that phrase before? Maybe you yourself have even said that phrase before. <clears throat> I will. So all you kids that are out there, when your mom or dad tells you to clean your room, <laughs> once your sinful nature has subsided for a little bit, you say, I will, mom. I will, dad. I'll clean my room. Even sponsors, they make a vow and they say, I will with the help of God. Or God comes. They say, I will with the help of God. How many of us, when someone says, can you do this for me? We say, I will. I promise. None of this baby stuff. Yet, how many times do rooms go unclean? How many times are vows broken when godparents or sponsors don't live up to what they have vowed? And how many times do we break promises to people? Yes, I will do it, knowing very well at that moment that you will not. For this reason, we need God. Specifically, we need Jesus just as the leper today, in both readings, they need Jesus. They needed cleansing. The centurion and his servant needed cleansing. The leper, we don't know much of his backstory in the gospel. But it, I know that if I was a leper, I would go to every single doctor that I can to try to figure out how to get rid of this leprosy take every single drug that I could to get rid of leprosy. But it's clear that this man still has leprosy. So he turns to Jesus. Because he knows that nothing else will work. And he says, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And what does Jesus do? He stretches out his hand, he touches the man, and he says, I will do it later. Just kidding. He doesn't say that. It's not an I will that is full of emptiness, but it is an I will that has power. For it is God's word. It is God's touch. And the man is clean. That very instant. Now, many times when we say I will, I think we think in the future, don't we? I will when I get around to it, when I have enough time for it. As if I have time, right? Life's busy. But Jesus here teaches us that I will is right now, in this moment. Jesus doesn't say, wait around for a while and I'll think about it. But he does it at that very moment. And the leprosy is gone. And the centurion is no different, right? He comes and he says, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed. And Jesus says, I will come and heal him. And notice what the centurion says. He says, whoa, 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 whoa. He, it's like he understands what that phrase means. I will. And he says, I'm not worthy for you to come to my place. And then he explains that he has servants and he says, just speak your word, God, and my servant will be healed. And then what does Jesus do? He looks at that man and he says, wow, that is amazing faith that this man has. And notice this. Where did that faith come from? It was not from that man's will, but it was from God's will. And how beautiful is that? For this is the same God that healed the leper and heals that man's servant. For God knows that our wills are broken, that our I wills cannot meet the expectations that we set up for them. This is why God comes down with his will and he breaks into our very lives. And he heals us. 
And if we question or don't really know what the will of God is, then as good Lutherans we can turn to the Catechism, and it says this, God's will is when he breaks and hinders every evil plan and purpose of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature, which do not want us to hallow God's name or let his kingdom come. And when he strengthens and keeps us firm in his word and faith until we die, this is his good and gracious will. God keeps you firm and strong in the one true faith until you die. God's will is that you would be saved through his son, Jesus Christ, through his death, through his resurrection. And God's will is accomplished in him. Just as God's will was accomplished in the leper and in the centurion's servant. Now, Many times we think that we don't need God's will. Because if you would say, no, I never think that way, that proves you need God's will. Because we always need God. There's never a moment that we don't need God. You see, the thing is that we are the lepers. We are the leper. We are that centurion servant. But it's all of a sudden, once we're forgiven, like once we come here, we, we say, Lord, we need you. Heal me. But then once we leave, it's as if we forget. And then the leprosy comes back. Or the suffering comes back. But what we must remember is that God has never left us. That God is not simply present in this building, but that he is everywhere. This is a side note, this has nothing really to do with the sermon. But when people come to game night on the last Friday of the month, one of the rules that I teach the people is don't say God's name in vain. Don't say Jesus Christ, even if you don't believe in God. And they say, oh, okay, yeah, we'll respect it because we're in the church. And then I respond with, don't you realize that God is everywhere? that that law should be obeyed everywhere, that it's not just in church. And so if we take this mentality that God is with us in this world that is full of leprosy, that is full of suffering, and people turn to every place but Christ to find healing. This is why we trust in the Lord, because we know that his will is done for our good. He says, I will forgive you. I will die for you. I will rise for you. And he didn't say, I'll do that later. But he did. For us. Now, brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm not saying you should not say, I will do that. But what I am saying is, let your words be true. And ultimately, let your words be based upon Christ, who is true. And rest is in his promises. Because there are so many times when we will give I wills, and they will fall short. And this is why we look back to God's I will. I will love you. I will die for you. I will rise for you. I will make you my people. I will give you eternal life. And those things are now. It is a pleasure to be your pastor. And by the will of God, I will continue to be your pastor for many years to come. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.